All right, hello and welcome back to Data Science CastNet. In this video, we're going to take a break from the generative modeling and AI art stuff and do something a little bit different, uh, potentially the start of a new series where I look at taking these ideas from machine learning and going from a simple idea or proof of concept in code into some sort of fully developed project. And so today we're going to be building something called a distill HN or distillation. Um, where we're going to be taking the news stories from the front page of Hacker News and we're going to be summarizing them with AI and presenting them in this nice sort of streamlined feed where we have not just the article link and the link to the comments, which is what you get on the normal Hacker News site, um, but also this automatically generated summary. And so I'm going to be taking you through how this works, what it looks like in code, um, how I deployed it, what the final app sort of looks like. Uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's get started and dig into the way that this is implemented. So there's a few different pieces we need to put in place. Um, number one, and this was a problem that took a while in the beginning, was how do I get the text, like given an arbitrary URL, right, to pointing to some web page, I want to go and I want to get the main text from that web page. But what I don't want is all the menu bars at the top and all the side links and all the ads and so on. Um, so I spent a while crafting a manual solution in something called Beautiful Soup, manually like making all these heuristics for what a, a sort of main content should look like, minimum length, maximum length, that should have this and that property. Um, but then I found this um, Trifiltura Python library that is basically designed to do all of that for you. And so you can pass in um, an arbitrary URL, in this case something from the GitHub blog, um, and it's going to go and pull the main text from that website. Right, so this, <laughs> this simplified life um, dramatically. And so I can just wrap these two bits of code in a function, get text, pass in a URL, and that's going to do exactly what I want, is going to go and, given a, a website, go and grab the main kind of article content and return that back as text. So that's step one. Um, step two is how do we take that text and summarize it? And it turns out that for this, uh, there exist many excellent um, models that are already available and pre-trained. And so this one here from Facebook, Bart Large CNN, uh, this is a large Bart model, so a, a transformer model, fine-tuned on the CNN Daily Mail dataset, which is a lot of news article summary pairs, right? So it's perfect for summarization. And you can see they've got the little inference widget here. You hit compute, it's going to go and send this large piece of text through the model, um, and that'll pass back some summary. And so you can run this in code, right? If you say um, using transformers, you'll see how to use the code, load the tokenizer, load the um, model as a sequence to sequence model. Um, you can go and read through more of the instructions there and so on. And but we get, what we're going to do today is we're going to use the um, inference API. And sorry, I realize my uh, screen recording is, is a little glitchy, um, but you can go click on deploy um, and it's going to give you exactly the code that you need to query this model using their existing inference API structure. You don't have to worry about hosting the model yourself. You don't have to download the multi-gigabyte model weights or anything like that. Uh, and that's great because it means that for us in code, what we can do is um, just follow their exact little code example. I've obfuscated my hugging face token, but you'd put yours in there. Um, and if we go ahead and take this query that they gave us, we're going to pass in a query that has our text as the input, specify a maximum and minimum length. Um, and so then we can go and grab the text from that website using our previous function and call our new summarize function. And that's going to go and give us this nice little summary, right, from all of this text up here. Um, so that's really great. That's kind of like maybe less machine learning than you're expecting given this channel, because I usually like to, you know, training my own models and fine tuning them and hyper sort of optimizing everything. But in this case, there's an existing model, it does the job perfectly well. Um, and so that's what we're going to rely on, we're going to say, well, I'm only doing, you know, a few summaries a day, maybe like the top 30 articles every hour or something like that. So we don't need to be hosting this on some big GPU server in the cloud, we don't have to be worrying about maintaining the right version and everything. We can just rely on the existing API. And if we'd like later, we might look at like, how would you scale this up to, you know, tens of thousands of summaries or something. There's paid API endpoints that you can get, or you could, you know, host your own solution. And that might be a project for a future video. But for this, it's really convenient that we don't even have to set up any ML stuff locally, we can just query this API. Um, okay, so then the final step was saying, how do I get the articles? Now, Hacker News has a, a REST API that you could have used, or I found this hnrss.org, which is um, a nice and convenient um, website that already creates these um, 
RSS feeds for different uh, aspects of Hacker News. So that was like for this proof of concept, perfect for a little demo. Later, I'd like to explore pulling in news articles from many different sources, aggregating them together, filtering them using machine learning and so on. But in this case, this already has a front page RSS feed that we can just pull in. Um, and so I'll use the feed parser library. We can go and query that RSS feed. We're going to get uh, 20 entries. And so we could, for example, just run through the entries in this feed. Um, for each one, grab the summary um, element. So each of these is a, a dictionary. If we look at the, the first one real quick, let's just do this. So if we just view the first one, we'll see that there's um, all of these different attributes that it has. So we're going to grab the title, the link, the summary is going to have the article URL and things like that. Um, so we can go through. Um, grab the summary. If it has the article URL, we can use beautiful soup just to find the first link. You could do this in other ways, um, but this I already had beautiful soup from my previous scraping endeavors. Um, and then if there's some text there, according to our get text with the Tria Filtura library, uh, we're going to summarize it, and then we're just going to print the title and the summary. And so if I run this now, we should see hopefully there we go title and summary of that first article, title and summary of the second one, title and summary of the third one. Um, so even though this inference API it doesn't guarantee that the model's already loaded, it's kind of loads them dynamically, it's pretty fast, and especially once you've done the first query, the others tend to go even more quickly from there. So this is pretty much the core code of this project, um, but there's a few more things that need it to take it from this cool demo in a notebook to sharing it with the world. Um, and so I use the feed generator package to write these summaries into a new RSS feed, um, which you can subscribe to directly. Um, and then I wanted to make a website. So I'll take you through like what that looks like on the hosting side and what that looks like on the sort of HTML JavaScript side. Um, but just as a reminder, what we want to get to is something that looks like uh, this, right? Where we have our, our final feed, we have images if they're there, we have, you know, um, link to the actual article, summary text, a link to the comments on Hacker News, and all of that's wrapped up in this nice website that we can just go to distillhn.com um, and see this there, access that. So that's where we want to get to. Um, a couple of things that are needed for this to happen. Number one, we're going to want to update this continuously or, or fairly frequently. So we don't just want to run this on our laptop. We need some sort of server or some way of running this function in the cloud. Uh, so you could set up a server completely from scratch. This is a relatively easy one to host. You've got a single script that's going to run, pull the articles, and that needs to run with something like a cron job every half hour or every hour. Um, and then you've got a, an index.html file that you'd like to serve, and the feed um, is an XML file, so feed.xml. You want to serve those two files publicly accessible. Um, but just for fun and because it was something I was already familiar with, I used this platform called Python Anywhere. Um, and so what this is going to give you is um, a kind of pre-configured environment for a Python web app, or um, they do have a guide for hosting a static site. Some over in the web tab, you can set up a configuration that says, for example, if they go to your URL slash feed, you're going to return this static file. If they go to slash home, they're going to get this index file. right? So if you want to be able to load static files and serve them without any Flask application or Django application in the way, you can just directly host those files through this. Um, but then you can also set up these tasks um, to run every hour or every day. Um, so that's, for example, my task that's going to run this script, which is going to go and do exactly what we saw in the notebook, query the um, query the, the front page feed, summarize all of the articles, put that together into a new RSS feed. So we'll run that every hour. Um, and then finally, yeah, I just have um, the little script here for the you know, these are the two files that I'm serving up, my, my script to make that. And then I actually did set up a Flask app, but at the moment it literally just um, returns the index.html file. So um, pretty nice, simple setup, um, but very convenient. And like this is like one step easier than setting up a server on something like Linode from scratch. It's nice to already have them managing things like the SSH certificates. You can just tick a, a checkbox to get um, certificates from Let's Encrypt, order renewing. Uh, they handle things like the domain name stuff. If you if you own your own domain, you just point it to the C name that they give you. So um, that's a very a very useful um, yeah hosting platform and, and something I think not that many people are aware of. If you want to do a simple little Flask app or Django app, uh, PythonAnyway.com. Not sponsoring or anything, just a, a service that I enjoy. Um, okay, so that's set up the server. I guess we should look at what that actual little script does and how we render that um, HTML file. So this is my uh, make rss.py script. 
and it's going to have the same code that we saw in that notebook for querying the Hugging Face API and summarizing the text. Um, but now we're going to do some extra things, like we're using this feed generator default feed to write our um, output. Um, and this is mostly just going to be for loading into our index.html file, but it's also useful if anyone wants to load this into their own feed reader. Um, so then we're running through the um, items on the news page. Um, if it's something we've already done, we can skip it um, or not. Um, we've got the title. We are um, doing a placeholder kitten in place of the image. Um, and then later, we'll try and see if there is a um, sort of social media preview image. So many sites will have this meta OG image tag set that tells you what image to show when you're doing like a social media preview or something like that. That's what we'll show in our article. Uh, our summary is going to be just the summarized function on the text. Um, and if it fails, we can put in some placeholder text as well. Then if you try and summarize YouTube or Mastodon or Twitter, you're going to get back a bunch of text, but the text will say, YouTube is a website hosted by Google you know, for hosting videos, whatever. Nothing to do with the actual content of the video. So for now, I just have these special cases that um, just post the summary being YouTube video and the link. Um, and later on, we can go and maybe find special like use cases for how would we summarize the video. Maybe we get the video description. Maybe for Twitter, we do the first tweet in the thread, something like that. Whatever the case may be, we add that to our feed, write that to a file, um, and that's pretty much it. So this little script is going to run once every hour. It's going to query the front page. It's going to get the new articles. It's going to summarize them and write them to an RSS um, feed. Uh, so we, we now want to display that. Oh, by the way, this is what the feed looks like. <laughs> Just an XML file with all of that data written to it. Um, so if we'd like to load this, um, you could do this really fancy. You could you know, write the, use big fancy uh, front-end frameworks and styling things. I like to keep things very simple. I'm also quite new to HTML, JavaScript, CSS, so I wanted to keep this as like vanilla as possible. Um, so I have here my title, my header with a, a bit of styling, which we'll go into um, very briefly. And then I have the sort of like content div with the title and introduction. Um, and then a footer over here. And what I'm going to do is in JavaScript, I'm going to add items to this content div um, one at a time, one for each item in the feed. Um, and so this is my little function stolen from, well, borrowed slash copied slash learned from this wonderful blog post. Um, we're going to go and fetch the feed. We're going to get the text. We're going to pass it because it's an XML file. Um, and then for each item in this data, we are going to create this little snippet of HTML, which is going to have the image. It's going to have the um, title as a link. It's going to have the um, description as a paragraph. And then it's going to have a link to the comments. Um, and then we can go and add this into the um, content div in our document. Um, and that's it. That's what it's doing. So this script is pretty simple. It's fetching the RSS feed, which in this case is just loading it from disk. Um, it is passing that. And for every item in that feed, we're adding in a little HTML snippet with the title, the image, the content, and the comments link. Um, so to style this, just using some basic CSS, I'm not going to go into how all of this works. It took me a while. I went back and forth with uh, GitHub Copilot and ChatGPT to get some of these working right. Um, but the end result is that this looks pretty nice. Let me show you on the, um, on the website here. Um, yeah, here we go. So this is the final website. If we resize this, let me just open my web inspector. Um, OK, so we can make it um, thinner. The screen capture is, is not working. So I have a slightly different layout for um, the thin and tall devices. right? So this is going to look more like the um, mobile version would. Um, oh, and my screen sharing is not showing the full. There we go. So that's what it looks like on mobile, hopefully, something like that. Um, in fact, we can actually see if we prototype what it would look like on like an iPhone or something like that. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty nice, um, fairly basic styling, uh, but that's about all I'm good for. Um, and that's all you really need. I know there's lots of things that you could do to make this a lot prettier um, or to turn it into something that's maybe um, yeah, some more polished final product. But for me, this is past the interesting point. We figured out not just how to do the code in a notebook that works once. We figured out how to deploy that into the cloud. You can go to distillhn.com and you'll see this. Um, we figured out how to get it looking vaguely good. We've worked around some edge cases, like when Twitter and YouTube didn't work by default. 
Um, yeah, so that's my project. I'm going to post this on Hacker News shortly. We'll see if it gets any traction, but I know that community tends to enjoy anything that references itself, um, and so that should be good. Uh, if you're watching this video, thank you for making it all the way through. Let me know if you're interested in this kind of thing. I, I'm probably going to go back to mostly the generative stuff looking at diffusion models, but in between I am quite excited about this idea of like how do you take ML ideas and turn them into machine learning based products, right? How can you take these things and package them and share them with the world in a way that scales and that works. Um, so this is potentially the first of many such little tutorials, um, which if you've stuck with me this far, you're hopefully enjoying. Um, and yeah, if you've got any ideas for what you'd like to see there, any types of content in the new year, do let me know in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, do all of that good stuff, and we'll see you in the next video.